Can personal growth be destroying your happiness? Well, this happened to me, and I'm going to explain exactly what happened, what I did about it, and what you can do about it if this is happening to you too. Now, before I do, I want to invite you to like, subscribe, and share all that good stuff, and uh, let's get started. At a really young age, I started personal growth. I really wanted to grow. I wanted to be the best version of myself. I think that was driven a lot by insecurity. I really wanted to be somebody different. I wanted to be confident. I wanted to be solid. I wanted to be magnetic. I wanted to attract amazing women. I wanted to have money. I basically wanted to be the best version of myself. And when I got my mentor, I was sitting with him one day and he looked at me and he said, Brian, stop trying to fix yourself. You're not broken. And I thought to myself, that's crazy. I wouldn't even be coming to him if I wasn't broken. So it took me years to really understand at a deep level what he meant by that. And my personal growth journey actually continued. I was determined to become the best version of myself. So I was basically determined to become a badass. Now we're going to revisit this idea a little bit later that you're not broke and stop trying to fix yourself. But before I do, I want to dive a little deeper into this topic. I want to show you the three stages of development that you have to basically go through to really wake up and become the man you want to be. And then I want to come back and visit the fastest path to that. So let's begin right now. For this video, I want to really get you to understand the principle I want to teach and what to do about it at the end, how to fix this. This could be radically uh life-changing it was for me when I finally got it. I need to I'd illustrate it with two different people. Let's take two children. We got little Adam. Adam is an expressive child. He's outgoing. He's got all these little passions and he's playing with his toys. He's learning to walk. He's learning to ride his bicycle. And he's constantly saying, or occasionally saying to mommy and daddy, look at me, look at what I can do. I just rode a bike for the first time. I just hit a baseball for the first time. And that validation is so essential to the child's future development. If the child is getting a lot of validation from mommy and daddy, it feels so good, right? Can you remember when mom and dad would say, yeah, good job, son. Um, that's a beautiful, you know, uh, beautiful. Like, I love watching you ride the bicycle. You did a great job. You're awesome at it. Or wow, you really knocked that baseball out of the park. Or if you didn't, you screwed it up. They'd be like, you know what? You'll get it next time. I believe in you. And these are powerful statements to a little boy. So little Adam, you know, he feels the support of dad. He feels the support of mom. He feels that love. And he's getting that internal sense of validation. Now let's jump over to little Bob. We got little Bob. Little Bob, on the other hand, he's got the same desires, right? He's human. He's like, mom, look at me ride a bicycle for the first time. Dad, look at me ride a bicycle for the first time. And they're, yeah, 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 good job, son, whatever. And they're lit, sitting there staring at their cell phones or they're, they're busy. Dad's thinking about, I got to get back to work. Or maybe they didn't even teach you to ride a bike. Maybe they were just too busy and you had to learn from your friends. Little Bob is constantly looking for that sense of validation. He's constantly looking for mom and dad to show up at the school play to invest in his life. And he's constantly pleading to mom and dad, please love me, please notice me. And maybe occasionally he gets that validation. But then the next day, the parents are just too busy again, too distracted. And if it's even worse, the parents might be alcoholics, might be bipolar, uh, they might be a single family household. So he just doesn't quite get the validation that Adam got. Now, me and my personal life, having a bipolar mother, that uh, was constantly distracted, never showed up at, at a lot of my school functions, just wasn't there for me. I constantly, personally needed that validation myself. I was, I was pleading for it and begging for it. Now, if you're a little Adam, that's great because you're probably going to grow up with a powerful sense of self-esteem. You're not going to be chasing, this is part of the key, we're going to come back to this, chasing approval from the outside world. You're not going to be running out there and saying, to every girl you meet, notice me, hey, look at me, tell me I'm good enough. You might, you won't be saying this to uh, your friends, hey, look at what I just did, isn't this cool? You won't be collecting a ton of stuff to prove to the world you're valuable. But if you're Bob, you could very well grow up like this. But now he's got a void inside of him. He doesn't quite feel good enough. So he might use things like sex, uh, just trying to constantly get sex to prove he's good enough, another girl, another woman. Uh, a body count. He might be using drugs. He might be using alcohol, which is also a drug, of course, or any other host of ways to distract yourself from the fact that he just doesn't feel complete inside. He doesn't feel connected to other people. He's lonely. He's hurt. He feels abandoned. And he just needs something from the outside world 
to satisfy that on a regular basis. This is basically who I was and it sucked at a deep level. So the next thing I did, I started to realize actually at a very young age for me, I started to move into personal growth. That became my addiction. My addiction was I'm going to get so good at a meeting women, being confident, having social skills, making money, whatever it is that everybody's going to love me. And then when everybody loves me, I'll feel great all the time and I'll have all my needs met. I'm trying to get my needs met in the outside world through personal growth. This became a, a huge addiction for me. One seminar after another, one training after another, one book after another. The amount of books I've read are incredible. And what happened to me was kind of huge. I got super intellectual. I was able to see all everything. I was able to analyze anything and see the psychological reasons for it. I was managing my stress and my tension with all these psychological reasons. And once I did that, I, I started to get a lot of validation for it. It was pretty wild. People would ask me about, you know, problems they had with women, problems they had with life. And I would tell them and their life would improve because they were basically normal, healthy individuals. But me, the same principles that I'm sharing with these other people didn't work for me. This may be familiar with you. You may have read every personal growth book, been a personal growth junkie, and yet your life is not getting better. Sometimes it actually gets worse. It gets more frustrating. And that can really suck when that happens. On the other side of this, sometimes you start to get some of the stuff you want. You start to get more women. You start to get more money. But then you crash. You start to feel terrible because... If you feel terrible deep down inside, if your insecurities are running and you don't like yourself, when you get more money, when you get more of the things you think will make you happy and they don't, you actually get more unhappy. You get more miserable. If you're experiencing a lot of loneliness, you actually get more lonely. A lot of guys, when they get a lot of women through artificial manipulative means, they actually get more lonely, more depressed. So eventually they pull away completely. So some of the things I used to feel complete inside was like morning rituals, evening rituals, uh, daily practices, uh, like I said, making more money, getting really fit, like trying to get six pack abs and, and trying to get more muscles, which I never got the huge muscles I wanted, but I definitely got more fit. And each day was an obsession. How much closer am I getting to each of these goals? Another picture in the mirror, another uh, notch on the bedpost, another phone number to go on a date with, um, another person I helped and supported. And they, they said, wow, you did a good job. And I feel really good about myself. The sense that life was based, my happiness in life was based on all these external validations. Brian, you're a good, good man. You're such a good man because the women like you, you know, clients like you, you're helping a lot of people, but deep down inside, at the end of the day, or if I had a few days alone, I started to feel that loneliness again. I started to feel that pain. I started to feel that sadness. And the more I did the personal growth, deep down inside, at those moments when I stopped, the more lonely I was, the sadder I was. One of the things I noticed in the pickup community is I would see these guys, most people would fail. They would work really hard and they, they wouldn't get very far. But then every once in a while, you got somebody that did really well. Maybe he'd become a pickup coach. And these pickup coaches would teach other guys how to get women. But what I found was a lot of these coaches weren't very happy underneath. Matter of fact, they would reach a point where they didn't even want to go out and meet women anymore. They didn't want to go out and date anymore. They just kind of hibernate in their room. And I saw this from more than one pickup coach. They'd stay at home, they'd hustle, they'd make money teaching clients, but they themselves were just burned out. They weren't happy with the women because they weren't happy with themselves. They were basically, when they did draw women, were drawing a match to themselves. So they're getting women, but if they were angry inside, they got women that were angry inside. They got women that triggered their anger. So in the end, they're just easier to start to pull farther and farther away. So what is the real key to this? In the first stage of this, we have the child who gets validated really healthy or doesn't get validated. So let's say if we're looking at this, the child doesn't get validated, now he's out searching and hunting for that validation. Well, this is why I like revealing in meditation so much. Now you've heard me talk a lot about revealing and releasing in meditation because done properly, and this is a huge mistake and I'm going to cover this in a minute, but done properly, you're actually letting go of trying to get more stuff. You're letting go of trying to get more women. You're letting go of trying to get more sex. I know that sounds like crazy because a lot of you guys want to do releasing and meditation to get mentally healthy so you can go get these women. But 
honestly, that's just personal growth again. That's you going back to chasing women. I'm going to use meditation to get women. I'm going to use releasing to get women. And I constantly have to turn this back around. You see, personal growth is about getting better so you can get something in the future, so you can become something, right? And releasing and meditation and letting go and, and revealing is all about stopping. It's about just stopping all the mind games and learning to love the now the way the now is. Learning to accept this moment the way it is. If there's no woman in my life, can I be happy? Can I find happiness in an open heart right now? If I get rejected, can I find happiness in the face of that rejection? It's about if I go out and I go to do something to get something and it doesn't work out, can I find my happiness without it? Because the more you can ultimately stop, this is the important principle, you can truly stop and find your happiness without changing a damn thing, the more likely you are to get what you want in the end anyways. But you should throw that out because if you think like that, you're going to be back in the wanting again. It's like a a crazy polarity like you're going to start chasing again to get what you want i'm going to get happy now so i can get what i want in the future no get happy now without what you want in the future trust me your subconscious mind is not going to forget the things you've chosen for yourself they're going to come into your life with ease when you truly get happy or they're going to disappear out of your life because you never wanted them in the first place and something better will take their place you see when you stop and you learn to be happy with life just the way it is and you don't need a thing to change, now you actually begin to live. You begin to have an amazing life. You begin to truly live life. That's where courage starts. The courage to really love life just the way it is. To open your heart and feel the moment the way it is. And that's the beginning of everything, isn't it? Because when you stop chasing something in the future and start getting happy now, it's easy to get what you want. And trust me, your subconscious mind doesn't forget. I just said that. It doesn't forget what you've chosen. But here's the thing. We can either go out in the world and really hear this. This is really important. We can either go out in the world to chase what we want and get it in the future. And the future is always in the future. You're never going to be happy. Or we can go out in the world as men to learn to be happy and let our future be a natural expression of our own self-love, a natural expression of who we are, a natural expression of our courage. You're not going to want to stop doing stuff because you're happy now. Matter of fact, you're going to start doing things that expand that happiness, not chase something in the future, but expand that happiness now. You're going to be excited to get up and work. You're going to be excited to go out on a date with a woman, not because you need her to make you happy, but because you're already happy and you want to share that happiness with her. You want to find somebody that will share her happiness with you and you create something amazing together. This is when sex can become absolutely insane because now you can truly enjoy each other, feeling each other's bodies running through each other because you're both in the moment, in the now, happy people expanding that turn on together. Doesn't that sound fucking awesome? Doesn't that sound amazing? Okay. So time to go back to my mentor. Remember what my mentor said, Brian, you're not broken. Stop trying to fix yourself. And I thought about this a lot and I was at a workshop one time and I was sitting there at the workshop when I saw two people get on stage. One person said, wow, this workshop is amazing. I just took it. This is my first weekend here. And it was all about, you know, letting go and learning to love the moment. And he said in that weekend, he let go so much, he went and made some more sales in his business. He was having so much fun that he made an extra $10,000 just by letting go and releasing and revealing more love in his life, more peace, more joy. And uh, then a woman got up the next day and she was crying and she was upset and she was full of tears, talking about the pain in her life and the suffering. And then she started talking about how she's been letting go of all her pains for 10 years. And I was like, 10 years, geez. And the teacher was like, well, this is going to be the big one, I think. I think you finally hit the big one. We're going to go through it. And I thought after 10 years, you're going to finally hit the big one. And I realized right there what my teacher was talking about when he said, Brian, stop trying to fix yourself. You're not broken. And I saw it right there in those two. The man was growing. He came to the seminar because he didn't see himself as broken. He didn't come for personal growth. He came to expand. I guess you could say he came to grow, but not to fix himself, right? And personal growth tends to be people trying to fix themselves. But she came to the letting go process, which is all about stopping to try to get somewhere to fix herself. So it doesn't even matter which technique you do. When you really realize that you're never going to find happiness 
in the future when you can really begin to heal. That's when meditation starts to work, revealing starts to work, letting go starts to work. So if we look at this a little deeper, she was literally letting go to get to some place in the future. And if you think about it, reticular activating system, law of attraction, whatever you want to say, what you focus on expands. And if you focus on, I am broken, I have to fix myself, what do you get more of? With every problem you solve, you get another problem and another problem. All you see in the world are problems because honestly, they're endless. You can find problems all day long. But on the other hand, if you don't see yourself as broken and you're just growing and having a blast each moment of each day, and yes, you're expanding, like a, a seed is growing into a tree, a puppy is growing into a dog, everything is in the process of becoming then your life doesn't stop. It actually starts getting bigger and bigger, faster and faster because you're focusing on the expansion of pleasure and joy and growth and peace in the moment. And you're revealing this amazing future self. That's why I love to use the term revealing. And when this happens, you begin to wake up each day ready to seize the day. You begin to have more passion, more turn on, your hormones start balancing more. You get, if you're a guy, you get more testosterone. You, you wake up like my buddy Mark Iron likes to say, ready to seize the day. And I think that is so powerful. You are now perfectly imperfect. Yeah, you'll never be perfect. And that's part of your beauty. That's what makes you so perfect. If you take these Japanese, I think they're Japanese, but you guys can correct me in the, in the, in the comments if you want, but they make these ceramic bowls. And over the years, these bowls will crack. These beautiful ceramic bowls and they'll crack. And what they do is instead of throwing the bowl out is they seal it with this gold and make all these gold lines in it. And it becomes more beautiful and more beautiful with each imperfection, it becomes a more beautiful work of art. And that's basically humans. As we get older, we should get wiser, more still, more present, more powerful, happier in the now. That is what life is really about. And when I started working from that perspective, not only did my life blow up, my clients' lives are blowing up too. This is why I love the long-term works. It really allows me to move you back to this idea of happiness in the now. And then I can watch all the other stuff you've been trying to get for years to start to take care of itself. So the third stage of this, I said there was three stages in the beginning. The third stage is when you start to become giving. Giving not because you want to get, not because you're trying to fix something, not because you're trying to impress somebody, but giving because you, you have so much excess, you just love giving to the world. And at that point, the world gives back. That's when the abundance starts coming in like crazy. And this is when you begin to really realize that personal growth needs to be done at the basis of there was never anything wrong with me to begin with. I just want to grow. And so when you learn to love yourself right here and now, when you learn to ground yourself into the now and enjoy it, that's the first step. Then the next step is learning, is going out and doing personal growth, not to get, but as a natural expression of who you are. What does your, when you're happy, what kind of personal growth do you really want to do? When you really understand how to create happiness, and this doesn't mean you can't be sad, angry, hurt, that, I've done lots of videos on that. It's just that you look at your sadness with courage and therefore it's interesting and you're growing and you're expanding. You look at your fear with, with courage so you can handle your fear. You're like, ah, I can't wait to experience this fear because I'm gonna grow from it. Just like uh, jumping out of an airplane. I love to jump out of an airplane, right? Like it's scary, but I can't wait to do it. Then suddenly approaching women becomes scary, but you can't wait to do it. Desensitization exercises become growth. It's all about you growing and then giving back to the world rather than you trying to get. When you're doing the reactive personal growth, you're trying to get, I'm approaching women to get validation so I feel good about myself. When I'm really grounded and solid in my body, now I'm approaching women to give. I'm approaching women to give of this solid version of myself, even if there's fear, even if there's worry, I can handle it. And that makes you so much more damn attractive. That's when you start getting dates like crazy. And I'm gonna do a video on this soon. If you wanna see a video on how to approach training in this style versus trying to get, but learning to basically stop from practicing approaches, then definitely put a comment in the video. I wanna see that comment. And if you haven't subscribed, also make sure to subscribe. So let's continue on. So. With this said, I want you to think about this for a minute. Think about somebody like Richard Branson, worth what, $7 billion, somewhere around there, maybe $4 billion to $7 billion, somewhere in that range. He has so much fun in life. If you've ever read his story, Losing My Virginity, it's an amazing read, you know? This guy has tried to fly hot air balloons around the world without landing. 
He's tried to sell boats, across, small boats across the Atlantic. He's, he's done so many amazing things with his life and he's lived fully that it's a natural expression of who he is. He has his own island, Necker Island, and during a hurricane, they just went into the basement and watched the whole building up top get destroyed. Well, they saw it get destroyed the next day when they got up and he said, oh, I'll just rebuild it. He lives life from this place of expression and fun. All the employees in his company, Virgin, uh, anything with Virgin on it's typically his, or he has some ownership in it. He, he wants to make them happy. His whole thought is if I make the employees really happy, treat them really well, they're going to treat the customers well. It all becomes from this place of happiness. Let's take a look at somebody like Elon Musk. What about Elon Musk? Does Elon Musk think he needs more money to be accepted? Does he, is he trying to get people to accept him? Or is he going after what he feels is a natural expression of who he is? Getting to Mars, living his dreams, going after the things that really matter to him. He's not sitting there counting the dollars in his bank account or how he's done better than somebody else. He's going for it. And that is what I'm talking about. And if you look out there in life, you can see people in this category all over the place that have got past this need for validation. And now they're just living a life of pure expression, going for their dreams. What I want you to do is put some comments in the video and let me know who are people like this that you can see, whether it's personal or some celebrity or anybody that you think is living this type of life. And, and really, so we can all like look at the comments and learn from this and kind of see how these people operate because it'll, it'll really help bring it home for us. Now, this is awesome. When you start to live this way, it's one of the most amazing things. And I've had so many clients live this way. I've had clients come in and, and all they've ever wanted to do was push, 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 push. I got to get my goals. I had a client, Eddie. Some of you know about him. Uh, I've done interviews with him. I've done talks about him. Eddie's, you know, this little pit bull of a, of a pickup guy. He was getting nowhere in life. And after finally getting this, after finally figuring out how to be vulnerable, real, start to learn to love his life just the way it is, stop chasing something in the future. Not only did he start getting women like crazy, he ended up meeting the woman of his dreams and he's now married. You know, it's, it's, they're, they're an amazing, beautiful couple and he's running the family business happier than he's ever been. Or how about my client, Hi? Hi, what came to us uh, in debt, broke, <laughs> uh, struggling in his business, always yelling at his employees. And he did a bunch of work to really change his attitude as he got happier and happier he started for some reason he said paying his employees more i didn't he said it was illogical but it felt right the next thing you know the employees started working harder for me started helping me get more clients and the next thing you know i had so many more clients coming in that i paid off all the debt i had within a couple months to the irs and then he became a day trader and the next thing you know he's making trades over a hundred thousand dollars like he was so happy i just talked to him the other day he's still killing it because he's coming from this place of happiness. When I talk to either one of these guys, they're living a life of passion. And I've got so many more clients like this out there. So I just want you guys to understand that success is built on you learning to stop, you learning to settle down, you learning to stop and say, can I love this moment? And then moving forward from there, moving forward in a powerful way, driven by the joy of the life you've accepted. You've come to full acceptance of your life. It doesn't have to be perfect. doesn't have to be amazing. It's just basic acceptance on the emotional scale. You guys have all seen my emotional scale. And from that point on, watch how the way you relate to the world and your life radically changes. Now, what I want to recommend is you check out my previous video, if you haven't watched it already, on when I was really feeling lonely. This was before I fixed this area and what I did about it, what I went through. This, this video was a little deeper for me. It was a little more raw, a little more, more real. So we'll post it right here and, and I know you'll get a ton of value out of it. And I also want to invite you to definitely check out my ebook if you haven't already, The Art of Fearless Seduction. It's a powerful read, helps you get more embodied so you can start to learn to really care about your own life more. And then on top of that, make sure to like, subscribe and share and uh, definitely comment. The comments are so important. I love your comments, guys. I, I, I jump on them right away, right when a video comes out to see exactly what you guys are writing. Now, with that said, remember, only the confident really live and I'll see you in the next video.